reducing your mortgage fast. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from Australian Broker about 10 ways to reduce your mortgage fast, particularly as every day I seem to be sharing another video where another one of the big four banks are increasing fixed rates. And if you're going from 1.99 to over 4%, <laughs> you're probably going to be hit with a 600 buck mortgage increase if you've got an average mortgage. So let's let's check this out, guys, because, well, this is probably something we all need to consider. I mean, the easiest one would be just to pay more. And one strategy I would suggest is, well, I'll just merge back here, is micropayments. Just make small additional payments to your mortgage. You find five bucks, pay it off. You sell the old Xbox, pay that off the mortgage. You don't go out for lunch and save a few dollars, pay it off the mortgage. And all of a sudden, you start getting these prepayments. You're getting ahead on it. You know, that's little things add up. And it's, it's encouraging to see. So let, let's see what they're going to tell us. For most people, a home loan is the largest investment they will make in their lifetime. And paying off the massive loan can be equally as daunting. Here are 10 ways to reduce your mortgage fast, saving you on stress and interest. Now, the fact that they're pointing out reduced stress here, I think is really important. Because, well, many Australians are forced to pay into superannuation. How many people would rather pay off their mortgage 10 years earlier, have a little bit less in their super, but have less stress in their life? Maybe that could be an option. Getting your mortgage... In your superannuation instantly paid in your mortgage. 10% every paycheck paid into your mortgage rather than your superannuation. Maybe give, it, give people the same tax deduction on it. And let's get rid of negative gearing and just do this so people who are buying a home as their primary residence get a bit of a bonus. What do you reckon? Let me know about that idea. So, number one, find a home loan that fits your needs. When choosing a home loan, it's not always simply about interest rates. Instead, select one that better fits your needs and suits your goals and lifestyles. Home loans with an offset account, for instance, could bring with them higher interest rates than other products, but might save you more money in the long run by offsetting funds in your transaction accounts against the loan. Good. Be cautious on taking introductory rates. Early on, most lenders may offer attractive introductory rates, switching to higher variable interest rates after the initial period ends, typically after a few years. It's important to keep an eye out for these introductory rates since the variable rate will dictate your repayments for up to the next 30 years. Additionally, you may be forced to pay heavy exit fees if you switch to a lower rate in the fixed rate period. Well, I don't... I kind of don't think we're going to... There are going to be many options to go from... to lower rates now with the current fixed rates. I guess they're all going up and... Yeah, still. Pay extra repayments. Yeah, that, that's that's what it fundamentally comes down to. One tried and true way to reduce your mortgage fast is to pay extra. Whenever you're able to, in addition to your monthly repayment, usually lenders will allow you to make bi-weekly or weekly repayments instead of monthly repayments. And since Jan 10, 2014, most mortgage loans issued don't charge for repayment penalties. Instead of simply covering the interest, extra repayments go towards paying off the principal, lowering the amount you owe. Typically, you are charged less interest if you owe less principal. Very good. Ask for fi financial packages from the lender. It is common to ask for alternative financial packages from lenders, including fee-free credit cards, discounted home insurance, a fee-free transaction account, or free consultations with financial advisors. Even though some of these offerings may sound like small potatoes when paying on your home loan, every savings counts. Consider consolidating your debts. Rising interest rates do not only impact your home loan. You could see the rates on, the for on forms of credit such as car loans, personal loans, or credit cards rise as well. That makes it harder to stay on top of all these debts. If this happens, you may consider consolidating your debt into a single streamlined repayment. Doing so could be could be especially beneficial because interest rates on credit cards and personal loans can be quite a bit higher than your home loan. But be sure to double check to see if breaking existing loan contracts will cost you in exit fees. Debt consolidation is not always the cheapest option. 
a good point there. Good things to consider. But here's the thing. If you consolidate your, pay off your credit card, put it on the home loan, you need to destroy the card. You need to destroy it and never use it again. If you've, you've racked up so much debt, that's the trick. You don't want to start putting all this debt for, think about it, for shit that you bought on your credit card on your house. Because that'll take, that'll be there for years. Consider using an offset account. This is a transactional savings account connected to your home loan. The balance of the offset account is usually deducted from the principal amount owing when the interest on your home loan is calculated, reducing the interest you are charged and helping you pay off your interest and principal home loan more quickly. Refinance to a shorter term. To potentially cut years off your loan and save in interest charges, you could consider finding a new lender with lower rates. But first, be sure to figure out the cost of switching loans. In addition to possible establishment fees to switch to a new loan, you may also be in the hook for costly exit fees payable on your current loan. Make one extra mortgage payment per year. Consider bi-weekly payments. One way to make an extra mortgage payment each year is to cut out your less important expenses, which can add up significantly throughout the year. You can also ensure you keep track of your home services by comparing your internet providers, gas, electricity, and even by looking at your health insurance. This should help you figure out where to make cuts to your expenses that you can then use as that extra mortgage payment. Another strategy that could help you here is to, is simply yet effective. Consider bi-weekly payments versus monthly payments. Since there are 26 fortnights per year, in just 12 months, you'll be making the equivalent of 13 months of payments. This will chip away at the interest and the principal. I was disappointed when my bank wouldn't let me do weekly payments. <laughs> Reduce your balance with lump sum payments. I mean, all of these, are, a lot of them are paying extra money. I mean, that, that's fundamentally what you have to do. You need to pay it off quicker. And often you'll have to earn more money to do it. If you've earned a large bonus or commission check, inherited money, or sold a different property, you could then apply the proceeds to your principal balance. Lump sum payments can, uh, may be the next best thing in the case of VA and FHA loans, which can't be recast. You will have to... Specify if extra money is to be added to the principal with some mortgage services. If that's not the case, you could split the extra money between the principal and the interest since it's dividend, uh, it's divided in monthly mortgage payments. And finally, try mortgage recasting. Since you keep your existing loan, mortgage recasting is different from mortgage refinancing. For mortgage recasting, the bank will adjust your payoff schedule to reflect the new balance after you've paid a lump sum towards the principal resulting in a shorter-term loan. The fees tend to be lower when recasting a major benefit. By comparison, recasting fees usually run a few hundred dollars, while refinancing fees can run into the thousands. I love it how they're charging fees and nickel and diming you for every bloody little thing. So guys, let's have a talk about this one. What do you reckon? I think there's certainly some good advice there about helping you pay off your mortgage. As I said, my strategy, well, when I didn't go fixed interest rates and put everything in the house, was just to chip away at it with little micro amounts, micro payments. And it added up. It added up and it was satisfying. What I used to do is I would always, because I was on variable, I'd always change my minimum payment to be the lowest it possibly could. And then the goal would be to get it as low as it would be. I wouldn't be worrying about it because every extra bit of money I had, I'm just chucking at the mortgage. But psychologically, it, it made me feel good. What do you reckon? Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts, opinions, and your suggestions on this one in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content I find and put together here, there are a few ways you can help out. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. And you can buy our merch from Heiser Says. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. And I want to point you towards, well, a recent video I did about programmable central bank digital currencies. They worry me a lot. They really do. The potential risk there is huge. We need to make sure they never ban cash, so we always have that as a backup. Take care. I'll see you next time.